before we dive right into going through um, the Sheldon, what I want to make abundantly clear is if you're just starting out as a, a uh, hobby machinist or uh, gunsmith or something like that, something I want I want to say is uh, this may not be for you. I, I don't think uh, just because of the circumstances that were involved in getting this lathe, <clears throat> I think it, it's it's not for it's not for everyone because uh, I really didn't have a chance to to go through it. So it'll it'll be interesting uh, this little journey and 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 see what we we got. But um, we're, we're gonna I'm gonna kind of go through everything with you right now. It doesn't mean that it it's not gonna work in those applications but there's gonna be a lot involved before um, I would want to put this into service so my point is is if you're looking for something to go to work that day and either uh, start learning your trade or um, getting better at your trade ie practice uh, this this may not be for you but it is a good example of, as we go through it, things um, to just bear in mind. Um, I will do a whole video on uh, purchasing lathes and how to really go through and check them if you can and, and do all, thing, all those things. But a lot of this, a lot of what we're going to cover here is uh, you can do on site even even if it's not uh, powered up. It, it, it's always nice if you can see the machine uh, power up and run it through its operations. That doesn't mean you have to go turn chips, but make sure that your your threading operations work. Make sure uh, your high and low work. Make sure that <clears throat> like like this. Um, just make sure everything works and it's not overly uh, noisy due to uh, play. Um, if one thing I and another thing that I'll say is if you're looking into uh, getting your first lathe, uh, especially if you're getting into gunsmithing, I I won't even consider a piece of equipment that doesn't have at least a one inch uh, through hole in the spindle, at least one inch, and has a steady rest. Everything else, and of course the tailstock, everything else after that is, is um, really at your own discretion. Um, but if you if you need to turn, regardless of what you do, if you ever need to turn between centers, you're going to need a center rest and or a follow rest. Um, and the the one inch through hole, or better, will allow you to work on the uh, heavier barrels if you choose to um, chamber using an outboard spider or something of, of that sort. And, and I've got a whole series of videos coming out on um, all the different ways. I'm, I'm going to do a video that covers all the different ways to uh, barrel setup. Uh, there's really only one way to chamber, but there's many different operations to chamber. And, um, and, and so we're gonna, I'm going to do a video on all that. But for me, at least one inch through hole. Uh, has to have a steady rest um, and obviously a tail stop. Uh, and it has to be obviously uh, capable of cutting threads. Um, if you look at some of the older machines like the Clausing, some of those older Clausings, you're going to have to change gears. Um, I really prefer a quick change setup, so I'm not, it's not a very laborious uh, ordeal to have to change out gears for different threading operations 
but it is time it, it you know there is some time involved and it, it can get kind of dirty so i do like a quick change uh gearbox for threading um and really i, I love these uh, american uh made lathes um they're just you know you're gonna you're gonna get real good standard threads out of these uh, because it's a standard lead screw it's not a metric conversion that you see on a lot of these imports today um, and just the weight and the quality of the the machine i mean this doesn't to me this like if you're going to start out as a gunsmith to me something like this is is really um, lends itself to gunsmithing it's a good size you can turn between centers you can turn through the headstock it's got quick change gears and it's heavy it comes on a very sturdy uh, cabinet style base um, one thing and, and the reason I say bring all that up is weight uh, reduce weight is accuracy weight reduces uh, vibration you know if you go out and you're looking at an atlas uh, a little atlas that's sitting you know it's mounted on a play, plywood bench um, that might be all right for some things but if 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 you need some accuracy you need to have some weight uh, just to just to keep all that harmonic vibrations and things like that down um, <clears throat> again this this isn't for everybody um, you know we we don't really know where this is gonna uh, go um, you're gonna we're about to find out um, but it did come it did it did uh, you know, it, it came with my minimum requirements. It came with a steady rest. It's got a tail stock. It's got, um, you know, a lot of these older lathes. Uh, you're missing your compound. This has it. It even has a, a tool post. This isn't what I'll use. This is the uh, old, this is actually original uh, to the machine. This is the old lantern style, and I've got, I've got all the attachments that came with it. Um, it's got a three-jaw scrolling chuck. Um, that is original to this machine. It, it still bears the the Sheldon stamp on it. Um, you know, it's got the quick change gears, and this is actually has either uh, I haven't gauged it yet or measured it yet, um, but it does have uh, at least an inch and a half through hole uh, through the through the headstock um, at, at least. Um, so it meet, it meets all of those basic requirements and that that's a good place to start i think whatever you're looking at uh if you're missing any any of these parts especially like a you know most lays will have a will have a tail stock every once in a while you'll see one without the the compound on it and you're going to have to see if you can get that most will have that's kind of rare um the most common piece to that do, doesn't seem to be with anything are the steady and the follower rests um, so like if you're looking at if you happen to see a Sheldon or an Atlas or a Logan uh, South Bend uh, uh, the 9 through 12 they all fit and they all they're they're interchangeable um, and they're they're available I, I haven't um, not not seen one on on uh, eBay ever um, and then right off the bat like this even though this has a has a chuck um, it is a three jaw I that'll get uh, you know just this is my thought process that I'll replace that with a four jaw uh, that, so I can dial things in this also came with the faceplate and uh, the lathe dog uh, so that you can turn on centers um, so it pretty much it, it pretty much the only things that this didn't come with that it came from with the factory is uh, this is set up for the taper attachment and that's been removed um, so I'm going to try to round round that up not that I use that a lot but uh, it was this lathe did have it and it would be nice to have it um, and then a couple uh, and the the, the uh, the spindle sleeve um, 
Oh, there was something else and I forgot. Oh, the follower rest. I'm not too worried about the follower rest. I'll shop for one and get it. Uh, but pretty much everything else uh, we've got. So, um, and then on your steady rest, well, I'll cover that when we get to it. Uh, but outside of that, that, it's just the things you need to think about is, um, you know, if you need it turnkey, I, I, I certainly wouldn't look at something like this. Um, again, this was, this was uh, free, um, so, you know, it's hard to turn that down, but we also know by looking at it, we, we've got some stuff to do. So, um, from here, we'll just, I'll, I'll bring you up close and I'll, I'll uh, start taking you through kind of my process of, of going through it. Now, there's some things that um, this will end up being a part of a series on the lathe um, when I go to actually how to buy, I'll do a video on actually how to buy a lathe and I'll cover all this stuff in, in a lot more detail in that video but this is more of a food for thought type stuff because there, there's a, some operations because of the nature of this uh, we can't, you know, I can't do and most lathes hopefully that you'll be looking at you'll be able to do these operations um, and, and I'll talk about those as, as we get to them. So uh, let's, let's come up and take a close look at our, our new to us uh, Sheldon Lake. So one of the first things that I like to look at um, when, I, when I look at a lathe is, is I like to look at the ways. And if I come across one that looks like this, I, I really don't let that bother me too much. Um, because I've, I've seen these get pretty dirty and discolored and, and um, we'll move down to the other end and I'll show you why that doesn't bother me and, I'll, and I can kind of tell you how you can check the condition of these even when they're packed with grit, grime, oil and grease uh, like this is. So we're down here on the tailstock side and you can see I kind of just brushed this off. Um, actually I just used this old uh, just a just lightly with a with a putty knife an old putty knife just to get the bulk of that off and these are this is something that you can do on site if you're looking at something like this and what I do is is I bring a little can of uh, WD-40 and I just spray an area down and just let it sit and then I go about looking at the rest of it I want to let that soak for just a little bit and then I wipe it down and as you can see um, these you can you can still see I don't want to use that screwdriver it's magnetized uh, let me get a different pointer uh, so what I was saying is I don't know if you can see it on camera but this still has uh, the marks from when it was hand scraped at the factory still on the ways um, and this what I try to do is I I find the, I try to find the worst spot and this was this this area right here uh, was extremely pitted or, or it looked like it was extremely pitted with rust it was everything else had kind of this wet grease this was bone dry rust and after about a minute of just that WD-40 working on it it uh, wiped right off. You can see the hand scrape marks still in the ways. And we have our uh, inspection insignia. Uh, we're able to read it. Um, and you might want to do that at a couple places on the bed, uh, on the ways, just, just to see. Um, but like I said, this was the worst spot. And uh, I was very glad that that cleaned up. Um, while we're down here, the one thing that you can do on these older lays is take a, this here's the lead screw and you can just take that lead screw and try to move it up and down. And this one has a little bit of play in it. And uh, so I don't think that's gonna really bother anything. It's, it's very, very slight. Uh, when we get to taking this apart, we'll examine it closer, and, and you'll you'll see that when we get there. Um, 
while we're the other thing while we're here is like I said before uh, on almost every machine I look at it needs to have a steady rest I, I use a steady all the uh, all, quite a, quite a lot um, and this does have a steady rest and I don't let the tips of these bother me um, these are really easy these are really easy to convert to uh, roller bearing if that's what you so choose that's what I like and uh, when I get to redoing this I'll show you a real a simple way to uh, convert these and then then a uh, more of a machinist style way uh, to address that um, but you know we have a steady rest it, it, it works uh, the only thing we're missing is the uh, the bolt and the lockdown plate and again as when we get to this part I'll, I'll show you guys how you can make those uh, we do have it on the on the tailstock it'll be the same um, so we're you know we'll duplicate that uh, maybe with a slight difference just so we can easily drop it down through the bed and get it get it lined up um, <clears throat> but yeah so we have we do have a steady rest and, and that's my thoughts on, on that. Uh, moving on down the pipe, we come to our tail stock. Um, you do want to make sure that the quill locks down and it doesn't move, it does. You want to make sure that it locks down to the bed. Um, this one's probably not even in position. No, it's not to lock down to the bed, but it, it's there and it, it does. Um, you, you do want it, not that it's uh, real important, um, but it's nice if it comes with a handle. Um, and you want to make sure it works, uh, moves in and out, and this does, and right now it's very smooth, believe it or not, uh, even, even right in there. It's still really smooth and, and the chuck works. I, I find that uh, absolutely r remarkable. Uh, the, the chuck itself is a little bit, is a little bit uh, sticky just from being dry, but um, it's there and it works. And uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that we can salvage everything here. I don't really, with this particular lathe, I don't worry about tailstock and uh, you know or is it straight is it true is it too high is it too low I just don't worry about that right now because there's the, the nature of this one is a little bit different than if if I was uh, wanting to put one in operation that day I, I know I'm gonna have to do some work with this and um, just because of the nature of the way this came to me I, I really wasn't afforded to be able to look at that and to be honest I don't care because I know I can fix it and you'll get to see how we do that that's not to say it's not important to check um, but the the short story on that is is what I do is uh, I always carry two like if I'm going to look at a lathe I, I will carry two dead centers and I'll bring an indicator and I'll chuck a dead center up in the in the headstock, be it in the spindle, preferably a spindle sleeve, and then I'll I'll install one in the tailstock, and that'll tell me where my align, alignment is, both both uh, horizontally and vertically. Uh, yes, both are adjustable, and and you guys will get to see that in a, in upcoming video. Um, I, I plan on taking a very in depth. Uh, look at lathes, lathe setup, uh, basic and basic operation. It's not going to be meant for the you know um, somebody who's already a machinist. It's really going to be geared to somebody who uh, is starting out and really doesn't have any experience on the lathe. So we have all our parts. They all work, albeit it's pretty ugly and rough. Um, I feel confident that I can uh, get this looking and working. Uh, great again so moving right along we are now at the carriage and we have um, our compound 
I'm not going to really worry about loosening it up and turning it right now. It's there. Uh, it does turn smooth, which really surprised me. Um, especially when, again, I see all this dry rust up here. You can see where it's been crashed into the chuck a few times right in here. Um, but it, it's really, really smooth. And it does have a tool holder. Like I said, it's the old Lantern style tool holder. Um, I personally will replace that. Uh, this particular size is right in between the AXA and BXA tool holders, which all it is is the size of the, the, the tool, um, be it half inch or, uh, uh, what is it, half inch or quarter inch. Uh, a AXA would be the quarter inch. BXA would be uh, the half inch. Um, I have both even on the big lathe just because there's some things that the BXA is just it's too big for so you got to use the smaller AXA. Um, so I have I have lots of holders for both and uh, so I'm not too worried about that but but it's here and it's original to the machine and that makes me happy. Our compound works. Um, before I even turn this what I like to do is I'll grab it and I'll try to move it back and forth. Um, on some of these older lays, you'll give this a push and it'll start moving back and forth. And what that is, is there's a little bronze nut that runs on this lead screw um, that is probably wore out and needs to be replaced. Um, this, this does have a little backlash, so it does have some wear there, um, but not so much that this is loose in the machine. Um, and the other thing that I noticed is they didn't do a lot of adjustments on this. There's still a lot of adjustment to take all this up. So it, it's, it's not wore out by any stretch. But I'll tell you, this is, this is very, very smooth. Um, I hope when we break it down and go through and clean it, that it, it stays like this and doesn't get sloppy. Um, so our compound slide works, our cross slide works. Our carriage works left and right, and again, I don't feel anything weird, like it's skipping gears or anything. It's nice and smooth. There's there's actually very little, very little backlash uh, in that, which that's really that's really cool. Um, this, just for information, this is kind of a neat little setup. It's it's a lot like uh, the South Bend. This is uh, your your selector so right now I'm in neutral so like I'll just call it one two and three position two is uh, the carriage is in neutral if I drop this down uh, move this up to position one and I tighten up our clutch that is our our cross slide, you can see that this is engaged. You can see the clutch is trying to turn. So if this was on, does your power feed this away? And then we'll go back down to our third position and that locks in the carriage. Um, and that works and that doesn't feel weird or anything and then you go to neutral and that's the only position that you'll be able to engage the half nut for your threading operations that's what this is here see right now it'll turn drop that in and we have to wait uh, it's locked down the other thing you want to make sure that your machine has uh, is the half nut indicator that's that little part with the numbers that spin and if it does make sure it works and this does um, and just while it's on my brain because we're looking at this one thing that I do if I'm not threading I move this out of the way it's one less gear that's running up and down your lead screw wearing it out um, an interesting thing with this clutch on the on the Sheldon lathe is this is a friction clutch in that what it is is it's 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 a it's a male and female taper 
and you turn this and it draws the two tapers down onto each other one way to engage it and the other way to disengage it and what's nice about that is if you don't leave this too tight if you don't really crank down on it if you do crash the machine it'll it'll pop and you won't you won't ruin any you won't strip out any of your gears or anything like that it's a neat little feature uh, on these and and that does work you do want to make sure that works so then we move down to what i consider really the heart of our lathe and that's the headstock we do have a three jaw chuck we do know that uh and this is original um to the machine it says right here sheldon on it so i i will keep that this will all get cleaned up and i'll go through it and um it'll get stored away and i'll probably um you know it'll it'll be here because it, it came with the machine and it's an original to the machine um but like i said what i'll do is this is a two and a quarter uh by eight uh spindle and thread so i'm gonna get a couple two and a quarter by eight uh, screw on adapter plates uh, for a for a three jaw true set and a four jaw true set um, and this will just get get put away those are just the style of chucks I like to use uh, again down on this end you can do a lot if, if it's not under power just by turning um, this isn't bolted down and it was not on hinges. This is actually how you had to do it. So we'll, we'll take the cover off and you can see, um, belts. That's kind of an undertaking on these old machines. You, you on some of them to change the belts. Uh, but you'll, you'll get to see how that's done. And you can see, like I look, all of my, all of the teeth are here. And this is very smooth. And normally what I would like to do is kind of pry up on this a little bit and see if I have any uh, ax axial movement this way or this way in the bearings, and I don't. Um, one thing this does have is a little bit of in and out, which is very minute, and that's an extremely easy fix. Uh, it's just you put in uh, a flat uh, needle bearing in place of the washers back here and that'll that'll eliminate that and it'll be nice and tight uh, one thing i do see is we are missing a tooth on our back gear and what the back gear is is uh, for low and so what you have is this little pin right here maybe it's not frozen hopefully nope it's not it's got some rust on it but it's not frozen so right now you can see we are completely disengaged from the spindle and this is how you would engage the back gear is you pull this pin and then there'll be a knob and a handle back here you pull the knob flip the handle up and now you're in low gear that's what runs your low gear um, worst case scenario because i'm looking at this turn around where it's missing those teeth that you could probably get away with that for for a while uh, you'll just you'll hear it it'll it'll make like a good dunk every time it runs engages um, but this has uh, one two three four teeth engaged all the time and we're missing one so as far as functionality that wouldn't be a big deterrent for me um, and then what you would do to run your high gear or direct drive is what they call it is you'll just turn this there should be some marks on here that will line up tell you where those holes are uh, but now we're in direct gear if you wanted to change the chuck you would go back here engage the back gear again with the with with it in direct drive and now you have gears on gears opposing gears and that's how then you just take a crescent wrench and a rubber mallet and, and give that a good thump and it'll should come right off um, 
and really all the bearings in here feel real good uh, like I said these are things even if you can't power the machine on you can tell a lot just by turning things and feeling and listening uh, one thing that these were kind of known for is when you engage uh, for your threading operations it gets get the, the, that gear is stripped out and, and is uh, noisy and this is not it's very smooth um, so it's either not there uh, which I know it's there um, but it's either you know my if, if I didn't already know it was there then I would assume that it's either not there or it works good and we'll we'll open this up in a minute and I'll show you um, and then we'll snap that back down into neutral uh, on this machine and this is what I was talking about in the first video on the date of this machine this is actually the war finish tag that they put on it this was produced uh, for the war effort and this was actually overseas working on tanks uh, pretty neat um, but uh, before you know before you had quick change gears you have this set of tumblers and then you would have to manually change out the gears here and that was on the Sheldon's that was like that up until 1940 and then uh, this is a, a series E it's it's basically its model number um, is uh, SEW QM uh, and the E is series E and I I'm still trying to decipher all that that's that's what I figured out one will tell you uh, oh the uh, Q uh, is the base that it was set on uh, whether it was a cabinet style or, or pedestal um, every all those letters mean something there's a there's a, a Sheldon forum on uh, in Yahoo groups that has a, a link to identifying all that I haven't had a chance to really research it that's that's just what I know from um, just because I, I like Lay's and I, I, I've picked up a, a little bit of information here or there on it. Uh, but this is a Series E. Uh, of, is a care, uh, one of those uh, tells you what the length of the bed is, which this one is a 56-inch bed. And on that, again, it's, from the, it's the whole length of the bed. So it says 56-inch bed. And on some of these older Lay's, if that's what you're looking at, you need to... Uh, be be careful on that is if they say it's a 56 uh, just for giggles you need to ask yeah but what is it between centers uh, because this is a 56 inch bed according to the Sheldon manual it's uh, 38 uh, 38 between centers so that's plenty big enough for really um, anything I do and, and if, it, if, if it can't be done on this I can do it on the big on my on my big lathe um, and again you know you, you can uh, you can get under here and look at your gears you can feel if they work it's always nice if things are under power but like with this one we can pop this off and we can look in there and we can see that uh, everything every everything is in there and everything uh, works uh, that's a or position B there's position C uh, position A is is really hard to turn um, but as I turn this what I'm looking for is I want to see gears not sprockets and that's what I see is I see a lot of gears and not a lot of sprockets so that's good um, and this does work all, all, all through every everything. I get it locked in. I say that now it's going to make a liar out of me. Oh, I'm not in the not in the detent there. Uh, but everything does work, and it turns as it should, and it engages as it should. And what I'm feeling for is any kind of vibration or just weird weirdness or weird feel and I don't it all feels it feels really smooth and and really quiet and, and it can uh, of course these old all of these yeah kind of have to fiddle with the lead screw 
or the headstock to get everything lined up and uh, I can cycle through all the gears pretty pretty easily um, so that's good and uh, it is a filthy thing I just gotta uh, it is really dirty but I don't I don't mind dirty as, as long as it doesn't fall apart after we clean it get get too loose um, so you know that you can go run through those by by hand make sure everything feels normal and you don't feel any weird vibration as you're turning it by hand or weird noises I don't like weird noises at all and then we can open up our cover okay again and then we're, we're at the back of the headstock with all our gears are and this is where you would do your change gears and, and all of those things um, and you just want to look at those and again make sure that um, you know you got a good fit and again gears look like gears and not sprockets and uh, really everything in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and engage this so I can turn it everything in here looks really really good and the gear that I was talking about that can get so noisy is this guy right here is you probably can't see it but a lot of times it's right right it's right behind this one and a lot of times um, if you crash the machine and that clutch is too tight and it doesn't stop that's the gear that's going to strip out on you and uh, they're not too terrible to make but all of these look really good um, you know obviously when I get them out I'll, I'll go through and and uh, check everything to make sure we're kind of within tolerance there is a there is a mathematical formula to use for that I, I kind of use a sheet of paper um, when I go to set these up but you can see it's just it's just dirty um, and the other thing is is if if that was worn you you would hear it even even at this just doing this you, you it would feel weird it would feel gritty um, and it doesn't everything in this feels really really smooth so I think as long as when we clean it and it if it doesn't uh, become too loose I think we'll be okay uh, with it but yeah all of our our gears work good I wish you could feel this but like this if I just press up on it there's a a weird vibration in it I let it fall in its detent and it goes goes right away so I'm really happy it's got all the all the oil cups and grease points are still on it and good and usable um, so really uh, we'll move around and talk about this mess back here on the switch but uh, so far what I see is it needs all the belts replaced as I talked about and we'll look at that in a minute um, it needs a motor uh, a good cleaning and one thing I did notice when I pulled this cover off and I'll see if I can I'll, I'll set this back up here I'll show you that after it's not a big deal but it's just something I noticed when I took that off that uh, we'll clean up and address um, but we'll get that closed up it's got all the plates I think especially if you want these are your metrics your standard is on the front um, I think that's very important when you're looking at the older machines because those are all your speed feeds and your thread setups um, so make sure that you have all your plates and that you can read them and if it doesn't that you can find them for that machine the the, the big thing to me is uh, this is this very well could be why we have a bad motor to me this is not suitable for 220 it's very undersized um, uh, the bearings in the motor which I'll show you that in a minute they seem really smooth uh, but you can see I'm missing a cover for the for the reset uh, switch and I'm missing for the cover for the uh, um, oh what kind of switch is this it's uh, not a barrel switch but a uh, uh, drum switch 
Uh, you can see we're, we're missing the cover uh, for the drum switch. I did go through and clean the contacts up um, just to see if it would fire up, and it did, because uh, at first it wouldn't. And I cleaned these up, so this is your forward, this is your reverse. I don't like that it's back here. I'm not going to change it. Uh, I'm going to tr just tr really try to keep this machine, uh, for the most part, original. Um, and so I'll, I'll, if I can't find this cover, that's pretty easy to uh, make. And, and we'll get this all buttoned down. Um, and then this is where the taper attachment would be. And you can see that's gone. Uh, but I'm, I'll, I'll see if I, that's not going to affect anything by not having it. Um, if I ever needed to do something on a taper, uh, you can offset the tailstock. And I also, I, I, I have another lathe, my, my big jet, um, and that does have a taper attachment on it too, so I can always use that. Um, from here, let's get down there and take a look at the motor. And uh, it's, it's kind of interesting on this lathe how you do uh, your speed changes and everything. It's pretty neat, so we'll go down and take a look at that. Okay, so now we're down at the end of the base where the motor is stored away. And this is what I was talking about, this angle here. So the, the uh, tailstock side of this machine would be sitting um, right behind the driver. And this would be the, the fender well. This is where it would slide over the fender well and it would be bolted to the bed on these two steel plates. And uh, in here you can see we have a bunch of pulleys and the motor. And so you have uh, different adjustments for all your belt tensions. Uh, this, is, this is from the, the uh, so you have a pulley that goes from the motor to this, this big guy here. And then these are all your speeds over here. And so if I wanted to change speeds, this is actually missing a knob. I would pick this up, lock it into place, and it, it changes belts very easily. Uh, just slide them over and then you drop it down Lock it down and you're you're ready to go uh, It has another little lever right here to pick the motor up and And let it down. I don't you probably can't see it But it's got a cradle under here so that when you when you got to if you have to pull this which we do in this case um, It's just you know, it's not going to fall on your hands um, so that's that's kind of my plan uh, where we're going to start because it, it doesn't work. Uh, the bearings in it are fine. It spins really, really smooth with absolutely no play. And uh, when it does get running, it just it, it's not coming up to speed at all. It, it acts like it needs to be rewound. Uh, but then you shut it off and those bearings just spin forever and ever and ever. And that's that part's good. Um, but you can see hopefully this is a major operation to change these belts so I'm guessing that those belts are probably uh, if they're not original they may have been changed twice but we're going to take because what you would have to do is you complete you have to remove the spindle uh, from the headstock that's not too bad and then you would come down here and remove 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 all this to change out the belts um, they don't they don't go bad very often so that's that's not a big deal um, in, until they do and then then you know plan on a day uh, so that's where we're at this is what I'm going to be working on here pretty quick is uh, getting this motor out and uh, over to the motor shop in Waco and see if we can't fix this one uh, if we can't I'm, I'm gonna look at getting um, a horse and a half uh, at 1725 RPMs at uh, 220, uh, maybe even three phase. Uh, I consider that an upgrade um, uh, for this machine. It's a little bit more expensive, but the cost benefit on your electric bill is, is nice as well as the operation is a lot smoother. It's a much more balanced current. Um, the, if I can't do that or, or it's just way out of the budget because those the three phase motors are expensive, then I'll go with a 220 single phase uh, horse and a half at uh, 1725 and um, that's it but the, the cabinet is all here everything's straight 
Um, really, really cool. Really, let's see if I can show you the, the whole cabinet. Um, everything's here really nice and straight, just needs to be uh, cleaned up and and, and uh, you know, it just needs to be cleaned up and brought back to life. And then finally, the one thing I noticed, I don't think it's gonna be a big deal at all. I'll probably go through and clean it up. But you can see right here, there's this weird line and you can see there's a couple little pockets. Um, this, is, this has been broke off and the dead giveaway was when I flipped. This is so, this is so you can access uh, that locking pin. Uh, but when you flip that up, you can definitely see where it's been uh, brazed back together. And so then we can take this and see if I can get this mud dauber nest out of there. So if we flip this up and we look, you can see we have this ugly mess right here where it was indeed welded uh, back together. And um, I'm gonna go through and uh, definitely clean that weld up. Uh, hopefully it's not full of bubble gum in there to where I have to grind it all out and re-weld it. Um, if I have to, that's what I'll do. Um, but I'm hoping that it'll stay nice and solid we'll just clean that up a little bit and um, by the time we get a good coat of paint on that you probably you know clean this edge up right here and uh, you probably probably won't even see it um, but that that's it so you know the the, the short story we need a back plate for our, our power box we got to make a cover for the drum switch uh, we need to clean this weld up. We need to clean everything. Um, and I'm gonna go right through it and do a detailed clean. That way I can inspect everything. And if I need new bearing or bushing here or there, it, it'll get done. And you guys will get to see that. Uh, we need a new motor. And we need to uh, modify our uh, steady rest uh, so that it's a bearing style. And again, that's just a matter of preference. I, I like the bearing, roller bearing style. I think they they certainly don't mar anything up. And um, and uh, I think they run a lot smoother. One other thing I just happened to think about because I was thinking about things that we need to do. Okay, so um, before I forget, one thing that you really do need to look at if you're looking at really any kind of used machine is you need to look at the lead screw and this is pretty true on on a mill or anything uh, because the it, it'll tell you a lot about the machine um, and what i look for i have to clean this because it's so dirty it's really hard to tell and then probably take some measurements but if it's been used a lot you'll see that there'll be spots where the thickness of this thread is thinner uh, than it is than it is in other spots and if if that's if that's the case then you you know depending on how much thinner it is you you may want to consider um, replacing that lead screw um, this one is so nasty it's it's really it plays tricks with the eyes a little bit because to me it kind of looks like it's worn worn right in this area and then here all the way down through looks really good but it looks like it spent a lot of time right in this area and it very well could but i'll get that taken out at some point you know when we get to it and um we'll go through that and i'll show you up close and personal uh what we're looking at and what you should look for and and uh, they still you can still get these so i'm not worried about it and, and honestly these um if you have a big enough machine they're not too terrible to make. And if you don't, then you can go down to the machine shop and they, you know, if you have one uh, and they, they can make you one. Well, everyone, um, that pretty much covers 
our uh, our our new old lathe. Uh, we got we got some work to do, but I think it's I think it's really probably going to be worth it. So just to recap, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to pull the motor out uh, probably tonight so that I can get it over to Waco, uh, the motor shop over there, either uh, uh, tomorrow or Tuesday. Um, and then I'm going to take all of that stuff and get it in the parts washer and get that cleaned up and ready for paint and grease. That stuff down there gets grease. Um, and then I can get the belts for it all of the belts. Uh, from there, we're gonna tackle the tailstock and the uh, steady rest. And then we'll probably dive into the compound. And then we'll get the carriage off and separate the saddle from the apron. We'll go through the, uh, go through the apron and then the saddle then we'll turn our attention to the, um, well, when you do that, that involves the lead screw as well. And then we'll turn our attention to the headstock. And then once all that's done, we'll be getting this bed and cabinet ready to go. I don't have the bench space to just be able to, and I'm busy enough to where I just, I can't afford to give up a bench to just completely tear this down into a thousand little pieces all over the shop and let it occupy time for that that amount that period um, so we're just going to go step by step uh, probably what i'll do um, um, you know between now and then is i'm going to knock that uh, three jaw chuck off which i'll show you how to do that on this style of lathe and um, get that cleaned up and and uh, but man it's rusty that just Rust, rust drives me crazy on these kinds of machines. They're just, it's, they, they shouldn't be near it, around it, have it on them, um, but they do. So that's it. I think it's gonna be a fun project and I think as long as um, everything feels re real good right now, as long as it still feels that way when it's clean, um, I think it's gonna be a good running little machine that, that um, can find a lot of a lot of use in in my shop so uh, i hope you enjoyed the the video um stay tuned for a lot more on the lathe uh especially with this one and um hopefully you you found that there's a lot of useful information in this short little video and if you liked it give it a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe um, you can also find me on Patreon at uh, uh, DH, uh, DH Gunworks, uh, which is different than the YouTube channel. Uh, so anyway, thanks y'all, and have a great rest of the day.